Hey boys and girls, in this video we're going to be looking at how you could use uh, the template that I'm about to show you to structure your thoughts and address these three bullet points and these three things that you have to um, basically uh, mention and talk about uh, to maximise the potential of getting those six marks for this part of the exam. Remember, we are working on the assumption that in the two and a half hour exam, you're in the last 30 to 20 minutes um and this is when you'll be working on this task now you'll always find a document that looks like this it's the same name evaluation always usually found just above or outside the assets folder and they always look like this so activity two use this form to evaluate your product save this form using your name surname as a final name so what you would have to do is you i would straight away change this okay so i'm going to actually show you this right now very quickly shouldn't need to but just in case you never know so you find the evaluation and you can either just click it once and then, then highlight and you type in your name or you could just right click and then go to renew or sorry, rename or you could click it once and then go to organize and then rename okay once you've done that you write in uh, so you type in your surname okay so your surname um once you've done that your surname will show up here and then you basically have this whole area here now as i mentioned in the previous videos in this series if you end up going to two pages, it's fine. Three pages, it's fine. Don't need to worry about any of that kind of stuff. You just carry on answering these points as best as you can and try to make it easy for the examiner to understand and uh, follow your work. So if you want to separate it through paragraphs, then by all means do so. Um, remember, the easier you make it for the examiners to mark your work, the higher or the, the, the better the chance that you'll be, you'll be putting them in a better uh, mood uh, and that can only play to your benefit. So... Um, as mentioned in the previous videos, you need to explain some of the important design decisions, justify those decisions, how you've done them, why you've done them, who is it to the benefit of, how does it link to the audience, your target audience, the client, um, the purpose of the website itself, does it work, yes or no, and any the, anytime you, sit, you think the answer is a no, you've got to uh, use those points, you've got to use those points in the improvement section. Now. I have, uh, was given this document here very kindly by a colleague from a different school and if you're in my lesson of course I'll be uh, either giving you a printed version of this or you can get a downloaded version, the electronic digital version using our Google Classroom uh, page. Uh, if however you're watching this um, online I will try to see if I can share this somehow underneath the video uh, with some kind of link and um, hopefully you should be able to see this if not worst case scenario you could always just pause the video right here and go through each of these points what i'm going to do right now really is to just just uh, break down these points here and i really do think this is a very good piece of uh, resource to to help you maximize those marks you'll notice there's three sections so three columns one going down here and these are the general important decision uh, so design decisions I would aim for you to go for at least a paragraph for each one of these talking about what so it's not just about you using these words color scheme I've done the color scheme okay what color scheme how where um layout what about the layout Lay the layout of what specifically what web page if you can I talk about all four of them um scrolling or screen resolution did, did you know were you allowed to have a scrolling page or not if so okay what did you decide to go for if not what numbers did you stick to accessibility options consistent consistent designs and the any kind of email links that they've asked you to include then we have justification and as i said as i said in the previous uh, video these two will really go hand in hand whenever you talk about this you need to justify it and this is here to give you some prompts some outline some ideas how as to how you could justify it so you find out from the client brief who it was for uh, and you should know this anyway. By the time you come to the end of your website and you start your, your your evaluation, you should know who it was for. If you don't know by this point who it was for, then there's something wrong there. That you know, there's you know, I would be concerned. Uh, if after spending two hours making a website, you still don't know who you made it for, you know, there should be alarm bells basically. So you should really know who it's for beforehand. Now, if you're in my lessons, then you'll be using the acronym What Le uh, What Baby Pats Lima uh, to help you plan for your website and the first letter of the acronym the w which is the three w's is uh, one of them is about who who you're making it for and what you're making the you know the purpose 
summarize those points here. So you will prove to the examiner that you know what it was that you were asked to make and who you were asked to make it for. With information about how you made it suitable generally, as in how did you make it suitable for them? So if it was for teenagers, how did you make it suitable for teenagers? If it was for music lovers, how did you make it suitable for music lovers? And so on and so forth. Now, it's up to you now. You could either talk about improvements as soon as you've done a paragraph. So you could very easily, and personally, this is how I would do it as well. This is a point. This is justification. Let's see what I can improve on this. So after each paragraph, you can have an improvement. Then this paragraph, an improvement, and so on and so forth. Or you can have this as a paragraph, that as a paragraph, 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 and a paragraph. And then have a large improvement section or separate ones. It's really down to you. There's no one way of doing it as long as you have them. Personally, I'd go, I'd go one paragraph at a time with improvements after each one. Why would I prefer that? Why do I prefer that? Well, simply, while I'm talking about this and it's fresh in my mind, it's easy to talk about some of the weaker elements of these points that I'm making at that point, rather than having to go back to it again. In my mind, and this is a personal preference, no wrong way, as I said, in my mind, however, it makes more sense to do this, and then once I've done that, I don't need to think about that again, I go to the next point. Once I've done that, don't just think about that, go to the next point. So then after each section, I know I've ticked that off, I don't need to go backwards again. But again, I'll leave it up to you. Um, so talking about the audience, as we said, does it appeal? Think about the text and image editing. Did you change it? If so, why? And how could, they, could you do more? If you could, in what way could you do more? Why would you make those changes? How does that help? The color scheme. What did the client brief say? Does it actually... Um, have good contrast. Contrast meaning is it easy on the eyes? Do you, can you read it? Is it um, attractive? Does it appeal? Is it easy to follow? You know, and linking it back to the you know the um, accessibility features here as well. Does it reflect the purpose of the site? If it's supposed to sell, does it actually sell? If it's supposed to promote, does it promote? If it's supposed to do something else, what? How? Does it reflect the theme of the company? The house style, does it appeal to the age group of the site? Could you add, now going to the improvements, could you add semi-transparent background images to help link to the theme of the site? Could you make it match the theme more? If so, be specific. Don't just write, change the colour. Yeah, You need to be justifying your reasons why here. You need to say, what could you change, how would you change it, and why would you change it? Who does it help? Next one, page layout and navigation. Where did the client brief, so what did the client brief say about the web pages? Did you do what it actually asked you to do? So this is the, these are the requirements basically, basically. You know, if it asked for particular pictures to be somewhere, particular, particular pictures to be edited, how was it supposed to be edited? Did you manage to do that? If it asked for certain things to be in certain places, a certain layouts, a certain, certain positions, did you do them? If so, how did it end up? What kind of sizes did you go for? Did you add some text to help the users know what you what uh, they do? Do all the links work? Did you test them? Explain that you tested them. Explain how. So you might say, after I made the first navigation bar, I tested all three on the te uh, on one page. Then I went to the next page, added the links on them, I tested it there, and so on and so forth. Is it easy to use? If you believe it is, explain why you think it is. Where's your proof? Where's a clue that shows you, okay, yes, this is easy to use. If you had to give this to this website to a six-year-old, could they navigate through it? What makes you say yes? What makes you say no? Why did you start the homepage navigation on the, uh, on the right? Or was it on the left or was it at the top? Just explain where. Why did you use rollover images or colors on the links? Is it easy to use? Go on to improvements. Add rollovers to your thumbnails. If you have, then you don't need to mention it. If you have add roll, rollovers, uh, you might ask yourself, okay, is it consistent or does it jump in size? When you have the mouse, uh, b uh, before you put your cursor, your, uh, your mouse over the button, if it's one size and as soon as you put your mouse over it, if it changes, then it's not consistent. And if so, not the end of the world. Just explain here, this is an issue I found when I was testing my website. And the navigation bar looked appropriate and, and professional, but when I put my mouse over it, it changes size or it, it, it jumped a little bit. Okay, so how would you improve that? Why would you change, uh, improve, uh, improve that? How does it help? Uh, could you improve the button themselves? Maybe add a bevel effect to it. 
Maybe the colors on the buttons could have been improved. Maybe the font sizes could have been improved. Maybe you made a spelling mistake somewhere. That could be improved. Maybe you can make the buttons look more like buttons or change the size of them or the location of them. Explain what? Okay, how could you make it appeal more to the audience uh, that you were aiming it at? Moving on to the next one, scrolling uh, and, and screen resolution. What did the brief say and why did you do it? If you have scrolling and it's not allowed, explain why. Or improving this by reducing the size of the banner or an arrangement of content and pages. Now, if you find you're running out of time and on one of your pages is, you know, is slightly too large and you didn't have time to fix it and it does scroll, just explain that you know pages one, two, or three had no scrolling, page four I ran out of time, unfortunately didn't have enough time to uh, change the size on certain items that would have easily corrected this so if I had time if I had the opportunity I'd go back and change this image or reduce this size or, or move this to this place and all of a sudden hopefully that would have corrected this issue of scrolling on this particular page so again being specific accessibility features how did you make it suitable think think about the high contrast colors no red and green and why yeah, that's just one example. Some people might think of some, you know, funky colours. I often have this issue when students come from, you know, straight from year six or primary school, and we have this habit of using, especially when it comes to PowerPoints, for example, and this habit of using crazy colours and transitions and animations, um, and it just isn't professional. And it's the same kind of issue, um, using colours that are all over the place that may not actually be suited to each other, may not be easy on the eyes, may not be that appropriate or professional. So you might say, look, I use very simple colours here, but even though simple, one, it links to the logo because I've used similar colours, and two, it's easy on the eyes, and that's the point. It's no point having a website that's too hard to read because that breaks down the purpose. You know, I, I, have, I fail to meet that uh, objective. Um, talk about alternate uh, uh, texts. Uh, on all images and even hotspots. What does this actually do? Why did you have these uh, alternate texts in the first place? You went through that hassle of typing them in. What does it do? How does it help? Who does it help? Uh, sealable font, 100%, so that uh, VR users, visually impaired users, can adjust the font sizes easily. So maybe you manage to do this. If you haven't, that's something you would mention on the uh, the improvements. So having something that increases the font sizes, so it's easier for people who have visually visual impairments to see it more. Um, into the improvements, as I said, you can say you, you forgot to do this, or maybe the colors weren't right, so you bring it over here. So notice how these are talking about the strengths of specific items, and these are the weaknesses of things that you could look to improve. So more descript, descript, descriptive al uh, alternate text. So maybe you said you've got alternate text, but they weren't descriptive enough. So instead of um, writing... Uh, an image of a young man sitting at a desk with black uh, glasses on reading a book. You just put young man at a desk. So you might say that's, an, uh, that's something to um, improve. That would help people with visual impairments understand the image better. Because remember, the whole point of these is for people who can't see uh, the image properly. Uh, may will be able to read it and understand what's going on. Edit images so that there is no red or green combinations together, or um, other, you know, unlikely colors, colors that don't work or you know aren't as complementary. Consistent design. This is where you talk about the templates. Uh, what did the client brief say? How did you meet this? Why is it better? Just mention that it's more professional. Mention that it matches the theme, the color scheme that was set to you. How do you how do you know the color scheme? Well, you think about the logo that was given to you. Uh, what was uh, what have you done to make this consistent? So you bring about to so talk about how it was so important for you to get the template right. The template picked you picked out the the layout, the color scheme, the banners, uh, the use of colors in the banners, the images on the banners, the logo on the banner, the navigation bar, the overall house style, the font choices, even the the font for your titles for each page. You did that on the template. And as a result, you have the consistency going through on all the pages because they have the same starting point. If you have any issues, then of course you talk about the layouts and positions of text and images. You might say, even though you did the template, in some pages you sort of maybe by uh, uh, inserting a certain image or media uh, item or plugin, it changed something and you didn't have time to fix it or you just didn't uh, do tests properly uh, as effectively or not and so therefore you slipped uh, something went under 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 the radar so talk about them 
uh, mention how you could improve that. Look for tables moving position slightly. How could it be improved? So when you test it, you might go to the home page to the DJ page, or if it's a different website, depending on what year exam paper you're looking at here, um, you might notice a slight jerk or a slight movement or, 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 or uh, uh, change of the position of the table of the website itself. Even the smallest changes is worth mentioning here to get those marks. And last but not least, any kind of links, especially email links. Mention that you created those email links and say that, you know, if if the exam or the client brief mentions that a specific link should be in a particular page, say that you put it in that page if you did. If it says it needs to be um, at a particular lo location, you should highlight that. And if you fail to do that, but you did put the email link in there, then just say, I put the email link in there, however, and it works, and you tested it, so when you click it, it does actually work. However, the client brief required me to put it on this page and I failed to do that. So you that's your improvement. Yeah, you've highlighted the weakness. You did one thing right, but you didn't do 100% right. You talk about those improvements in this section here. Uh, other things you could talk about is by adding a contact form or um, this would reduce spam caused by bots searching the site for mail to links. Um, maybe the location in terms of, you know, you might say you put it on the right page, but was it in the right location of the page? Is it um, formatted well? Is it hidden underneath a lot of text? Is it somewhere that you have to scroll down to? Uh, is it easy to find? It's those kind of questions. Does it work? Because we're assuming that it works here. Some of you may have put the wrong link in there. Some of some of my students uh, have made the mistake of uh, sometimes putting a normal hyperlink instead of an email link. So when you look at the website, you know they both have the blue font and, and it's underlined, and it looks like a link because it is. But is this an e an actual email link? So make sure you test for those items as well. Now, if you do this in this fashion, and it doesn't really matter what your or what order you do it in, although I would argue that you'd always start with the audience and the purpose. Um, you should be able to maximize your marks and get the six uh, out of six for this task.